Welcome to the Grace Writers Podcast, Christian writers changing popular culture. Find us on your favourite podcast player and at gracewriters.com. Today on the podcast, email lists. What content should I send them? I'm Belinda Pollard. I'm an author, editor and writing coach with a theology degree and 20 years in the publishing industry. Find links to my blogs, books and courses at belindapollard.com. Hi, I'm Alison Young. I'm a romance writer under the name Alison Joy. I'm a former early childhood educator and I have four adult kids and you can find all my work on alisonjoywriter.com. Hi everyone, I'm Danita Bundy. For the last 20 years I've been using my theology degree to inform my teaching and preaching and more recently my writing and blogging but you can find out all about me at danitabundy.com. Our topic today, the next in our author platform series, email lists, what content should I send them? We're going to look at three main topics under this today. First of all, some research into what others are suggesting we should do some personal discussion about what the three of us are each trying with our email lists, and then a bit of a look into, because we're grace writers, the spiritual and ethical aspects, how to shape our email list content in a godly way. Alison, you've been looking into some of the research for us. What are other people suggesting? What types of things are they saying that we could include in our email newsletters? Yeah. First of all, at the outset, I'd just like to say we've been discussing the importance of having your own email list and because you don't know if it's your, you need to have your own real estate, you have to have something that you own because you don't know what's going to happen down the track with all the big players, the big tech players. And we've seen that recently here in Australia because there's been a bit of a to do between the government here and Facebook over content on content that Australian people can see. It just reinforces the fact that we need to have our own email list, our own way of gathering information and being able to contact readers because otherwise if, if something like that happens, you've lost everything. If that's the only way you connect to but your readers, you've lost everything. So it's I think it's important. in one basket thing, isn't it? Mm, you know, we need to mm. make sure we have multiple different ways to connect uh, with our readers and our communities. Yeah. One of the things that was suggested is, is when you're doing emails, it's very difficult. Like if you've got a whole range of people, how are you how are you going to find something that everybody's going to like? So they suggest, okay, come up with your ideal reader, an avatar, somebody that represents your ideal reader and just focus on writing to that person so it'll make it it'll make it more personal from you because you're, it's like you're talking to one person, not however many people you've got on your mailing list. So that's mm. one thing that you can consider doing is having what they call an avatar or somebody to represent your ideal reader. And you need to... Before you, when you when you start doing emails, obviously you need to promote it everywhere. So everywhere you've got a presence on your Facebook, your website, your email signature, the back of your book, you need to promote it so people can find it. So okay, what do you put in a put in a um, an email? Well, you know, the sky's the limit. I guess there's so many things you can do. It's probably a good idea to start and and develop some sort of template or design that reflects you as a writer. And and then you need to come up with, I mean, obviously, if you're starting out like me, you're going to be chopping and changing a bit until you find what works for you. But if you have something that you feel um, represents you as a writer, as a person, and it's consistent. So every time that you send out an, uh, an email, a newsletter to somebody, a reader, they know what to expect. So you might have like a main section, a bit of a story. You might have a bit about a writing update. You might have a, you know, whatever you want in this in these sections so to make it um, consistent when you send it out. You don't want to make it too long because obviously people have time for, but you want to make it interesting. So keep it short and 
keep it interesting. I really like that one that you mentioned about writing as though you're writing to one person. Mm. Uh, that's quite an interesting way to think about it because then you can write as though you're writing to a friend and, and talking about things that they'd be interested in. It's quite interesting. Mm. It's a good idea that. Mm. And I also like what you raised there, Alison, about the fact that you're changing as you figure it out because you're yeah. out there in the piece. And I, I think it's so important for all writers to understand that it is okay to muddle around a bit and try yeah. things. Uh, mm. My entire online career is could be titled trial and error um <laughs> and uh it's <laughs> a bit like a um a bit like a very long novel written by a russian but um it's <laughs> it's been very complicated but there's you know some of the things that um you can send you can send people deleted scenes short stories novellas Whole books, if you're wanting to incentivize people signing up, photos, book news, speaking invitations. There's so many different possibilities and ideas that are out there. And I think what I tend to find is as I'm rummaging around looking for ideas, I'll find a particular idea that one person says, this is fantastic, this works, this will do the trick. And then there'll be someone else saying, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important that we try and work out something that's sustainable for us yep. and that fits for us and for our readership. And that's got mm. to be trial and error to figure that out. Do you mm. agree, Danita? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and my journey is not quite as long as yours, Belinda, but that's exactly the same thing. I've started, tried, failed, started, trialled, minor success, tweaked, <laughs> and currently I um, have a recipe that I'm, I think is working for me at this point in time. So um, who knows how long that will last? Who knows <laughs> how soon it'll get changed? I don't know. I also um, struggle with doing the same thing over and over again. I get bored. Uh, I like change. I enjoy change. Um, so like you come to my house every six months, the furniture's changed around because I, I can't stand things the same all the time. So yeah, the same with my newsletter, uh, my email list, mm. things change. There can be <laughs> that's okay. There can be consistency within change, can't there? Oh yeah, absolutely. Or change so in saying that. Um, yeah. 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 So in saying that, um, there I do have I have developed a uh, a format. And I stick to that format, but within that format, what I put in there or how things go, I flick it around a little bit. Um, so what so, do you include in, in your current newsletters format? Um, I've, I've done what you've both commented. Um, I've decided to try to be quite personal um, and transparent and start because, because the, the idea I'm told is to build community and, and grow your tribe. Um, I thought I can't do that with being standoffish. So the opening part of my newsletter, which I send out once a month, the end of the month, is what I've been doing and have been going uh, personally, all the things that I'm doing with the school, where I teach at school, the writing group that I lead um, with my um, books, where I'm up to with my books. And then I've got a format. Um, I do the updates, a bit more detail about where the books are up to. Um, I put links to where people could buy my books. Then I have links to the blogs that I've done during the month. And then I have links to the podcast that we've done this month, the current month. And then oh, I've tried in the past. I went through a, uh, a cooking phase. I was making, you know, my mum, I've got two boys at home. We go through a lot of food and I was experimenting a lot. So I'd put recipes in going, oh, I've got this great recipe. And then in the end I was thinking, I'm not a cook. Like, why am I putting recipes in my newsletters? Because that's not like, seriously, come on. Um, but on my website, I have a gallery because I enjoy photography. So then I thought, well, every month I'll put the, um, I, I change my gallery on my website every month. So at the bottom of my week, uh, monthly newsletter, I have um, shots of the month, which, you know, four or five photographs that I think are the best, the pick of the bunch for the month. Um, and then, so that goes out once a month, a summary of what I've been up to. And then each week I'll send out a link to my blog. Um, 
yeah so mm-hmm. that's and currently um that's working i've just recently changed the um images like the formatting and the the template but the the process like you said Alison, it's it's that um recipe throughout the thing it currently is how it's going yeah, yeah. it's great yeah. what yeah. about you Alison? what have you been sending <laughs> oh you're funny um well i'm just <laughs> I'm just a brand newbie, so I don't actually have anything set up yet. I've, I've got my onboarding sequence and I've got it ready to go. That's I'm fantastic to have your onboarding I'm sequence. I'm going to need people to sign up to get my newsletter and then I'll be able to send you the stuff. So <laughs> what, are you, a, what are you thinking a, of sending? What are you, what are you contemplating sending? What am I contemplating? Well, I think I think what Danita said, it, it's got to be personal, so it'll be a bit of a bit of a snippet of something that mm. you want to share, something personal that you want to share that you don't mind being out there in the world and then maybe a little bit about how the writing, whatever current project you're working mm-hmm. on. Mm. And I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'd be like Danita. I, I take a lot of photographs, so I'll probably, at this stage, I'm probably going to put a different photo at the top of the newsletter and then probably a couple more through it. So, and, yeah, there's just so many ideas out there that, you know, it's like, oh, a bit of this would be good, a bit of this, and you just got to cherry pick and decide and it'll be it'll be an ongoing process. But I've got a book launch coming up soon, so I'm going to use that as an opportunity mm. to get, to get um, some subscribers and then I'll, you know, put it out on my um, social media and see how we go. I Your... Um... Your books as well, Alison, are set in interesting locations that mm-hmm. have a bit of kind of virtual tourism aspect to them for your readers. So I wonder if, and I know you've been to some interesting locations to research for those, I wonder if you could maybe tell some of the stories of where you went and some of the photos of where you went, even though they would obviously be a few years ago now, I think they could possibly still be quite interesting topics for people. It's just a thought. Mm. Yeah, I've got it. The the book that I'm currently working on, the work in progress, is set in Fiji because I've set it in Fiji because I've been there a few times. So there's quite a few stories, things that have happened in the book that sort of happened to me. Well, sort of happened to me. I've just changed a little bit. So I I can I can. Um, Even yeah, though definitely. you were already married. <laughs> I did go to a Fijian wedding which was amazing, and that is there is a Fijian wedding in the book. So, you know, I can pull bits and pieces from my experience and yes. and actually expand on it a bit. And I guess even even in the, the first book I've written, there's different different places we went or different anecdotes that I could, yeah, I could definitely mm-hmm. weave those into the newsletter as well. I would, I I would find that interesting to read. So... Mm. You know, I, I can't speak for obviously everybody in the world, but I would find it interesting to read. Yes, you know, so. I like your books and I like the fact that they're set in these interesting locations and I would find it interesting to read about when you went to the locations and maybe even some things about how your experience of it was a bit different to your characters or uh, or how it uh, prompted ideas for things that you then completely made up or I'd find that interesting, but um, yeah. Would you do the same, Belinda, for your books because they're set in um, amazing locations? Would you would been, you consider doing the same thing? I have been thinking about that. One of the things that I'm working on, I've got three newsletters at this point for three different websites. So because you know uh, nothing succeeds like excess, uh, but uh, so. I'm actually looking at uh, this. Two of my two of my websites are f- fairly well established. There's the the Grace Writers one just gets sent a link to the podcast every second week and a link to the Grace Writers Zoom meeting on the first for the first Saturday of the month. And um, I'm looking at perhaps some opportunities for. Uh, enabling some of the grace writers to share perhaps a, a piece on some of the other weeks. So I'm looking at maybe thinking if there's ways we can make that happen with my smallbluedog.com, which is my writing, editing and publishing tips. Uh, I am 
reinvigorating this one to go to a monthly newsletter this year uh, to publish uh, publish a new article or a revised article because those articles can take me a couple of days to write. They're long. Oh. They're about 2,000 words uh, and they've got a lot of detail in them. So I'm kind of looking at trying to manage that. So, uh, and emailing to that a description of the article and perhaps some links to some other things that might be of interest to my courses or other things that are available. But it's the one uh, at belindapollard.com, which is sort of my online hub that redirects people to different places and which is the one that's most tied to my fiction. And that's the one that's been snoozing in a coma for quite a while. And I'm looking to rethink that and you've inspired me actually Danita with the way that you do your newsletter with uh, you've got you know a story and then some photographs and some links to different things and I'm thinking I could do a bit of a similar thing and I'm also thinking about um, I have written some blog posts over the years about how I went and researched some of my stories but I could do a bit more of that but I'm also thinking about perhaps doing a, uh, a series of articles on some of my travel catastrophes over the years, just, just, just short humorous pieces. Uh, yeah. So a new piece of creative writing at the head of each newsletter each month. It's kind of what I'm thinking about. And for the listeners out there, we actually record these a bit ahead. So you can go and check and see if we've done these things that we're talking about. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about and maybe some a bit of book news, uh, a few of my Instagram, my favourite Instagram photos from the month yeah. um, and some links to what's happening on my other website, so the podcast and maybe a new article that's on smallbluedog.com. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking about because I, I do so agree with you, Alison, that this is what we've got to take a bit more seriously. I think an email list is a, is a powerhouse, not just for helping us build our careers as writers, but for helping us to build a community Mm. and to have influence and an impact mm. in useful ways. Mm. So not just about me, 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 but about uh, having making a difference. Yeah. Making a difference. Mm. Yeah. I think whatever we put in, it's got to be something. In, it's got to be something that they won't get anywhere else except so they can... It's so, so we can attract people or attract readers to this forum and give them something that they won't find anywhere else just so they'll stick around because, mm. yeah, as I said, they can't get it anywhere else. So. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Danita, um, we're grace writers. There are spiritual and ethical aspects of this. How can we shape our content in a godly way? Thanks, Belinda. Um, I'm currently, as I um, said last time, I'm still working my way through that beautiful book by Madeleine L'Engle, uh, Walking on Water. Uh, she, I was just going to start with a quote of hers um, on page 25, I think it is. She said, art is communication. And if there is no communication, it is as though the work has been stillborn. I think we really need to understand that it doesn't matter how humble we um, want to be or come across. It is important that if we have labored over this work, we, we really do need for it and want for it to be communicated. And the email list is, is one of the main ways we do that. Um, yes, building that tribe. Um, it, but it's not all about us, as you said, Belinda. It's about building and, and contributing to a community because we weren't created to be alone. We were created to belong to community. And this is one way of us not only building a community but contributing to it. Um, and one way we do this, whether it's through newsletters, whether it's a blog, whether it's the podcast or whether it's updates on 
um, what we're doing as our writer and sharing our world and our life with others. Um, it's really important for us to, um, I think the bottom line is to respect the people who have given us their personal information. Um, it's not an invitation for open slather for us to just bombard people with whatever's going on, um, the trivial things or whatever. I think the bottom line is we need to respect the people who and their space and their time and their inbox basically with with what we're putting in there um, because we're we're only given one opportunity really because if we um, are, receive those email um, email addresses and we start that communication if we do whatever if we go over the top or um, we don't respect our audience that door is shut and once it's shut it's not re easily reopened so um, part of that respect is also creating quality content in whatever we're putting out like I said before whether it's your updates on the newsletter whether it's the blog or the podcast or whatever you're sending out we are aiming to have quality content in all that we do um, because regardless of what your medium is we've taught we know grace writers we aren't just writing uh, fiction. We write non-fiction. We've got copywriters. We've got um, songwriters, playwrights, and um, comedians. And we've got um, opera operettas uh, or writers out there as well. Um, regardless of what our medium is um, and our context and who our audience is, we represent Christ. And whatever we do, we reflect the glory of God. And so this should underpin everything that we do, whether um, because these days we are online all the time, we live online, that who we represent comes out in our social media and our responses and um, our art and what we write, how we write, fiction, nonfiction to a Christian audience or to a non-Christian audience um, and our email list. Everything we do is... Um, in response to who we represent. Um, if in doubt in what to put into our email list, we pray about it and give it a go. As we've said a number of times um, today, you're not locked in. Um, give it a go. And in the early days, we're not going to have a huge audience. So it doesn't matter if we make a few mistakes. If we're genuine, people are forgiving. Um, but I would just say, if in doubt, leave it out. Um, if you're not sure about something, you're better off leaving it out and continuing to pray about what goes in there. Um, but to sum up, I think, as I've said, and I'll keep reiterating, I believe that the underpinning principle in what we're sending out is respect. If we get that right, we can't go wrong. We respect our audience, we respect their time, and we respect their need. Um, as we've said before on the on the pod, we are um, we see ourselves as transporters, taking people from where they are to where they want to be or where they need to be. Our content is a way of doing that. We have a gift that we want to offer, and we see that as um, an opportunity to do that through our email list. So, respecting the audience, reflecting who we represent, and I think. Um, yeah, trying to be authentic about who we are, as Alison said, I think we can't go wrong. Mm. Thank you. Any final thoughts, Alison? Brainstorming yeah. and just write a list of, of possible things and just Google and have a look and see what other people put in their yeah. newsletters and then just work your way through and go, you know, use some, flick some. And it's just, as we as we've said over and over, it's just a learning process, you know, mm. you'll get there eventually and find what works for you. Mm. Mm. Yes. How about I pray for the Grace Writers? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we live in a time when we can connect with our readers and our communities in these particular ways. We thank you that there are systems available to us that we can use to send out information to people. We thank you for these new possibilities for connection and encouragement and building community. Pray for each one of us that you will give us wisdom as we try and figure out what to do, that you will give us courage as we experiment 
and that you might bless us and open doors and lead us to the people that you want us to be connected with because in the end that's actually what we want not a million people on a list but the people that you want on the list so we commit it to you lord in jesus name amen Mm. thank you danita bundy and alison joy i'm belinda pollard And we will see you next time on the Grace Writers Podcast. Continue the conversation in our free online forum. Please like and share the podcast to help other writers find us. And subscribe on your favourite podcast player. Read transcripts, join the forum and connect with us at gracewriters.com.